Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a plant shop vlog where I take you guys all behind the scenes of me running my plant shop from home. This week we do have some unfortunate news. The New Jersey house plant event that I was supposed to be vending at this Sunday, April 30th, has actually been rescheduled due to a really big rainstorm that we're having this weekend. It definitely really sucks because I have been talking about it along with so many other vendors and people that were excited to go there and purchase plants. The new rescheduled date is actually June 10th. As June gets closer, that's when I'll be actually able to determine if I can really vend or not. They're also trying to plan one for late summer going into fall. So hopefully I'll be able to attend that one. But for now, this one that's happening on Sunday is canceled. So I had a whole agenda of things I wanted to do this week to prep for the market event. But since it's not happening, obviously my plans are changed. So instead of me prepping for the market, I'm going to list all these plants in the greenhouse on my shop website for you guys to shop. So so since there is a ton of plants in here that are not on the shop, I'm going to have a lot of work to do this weekend. So the first thing I need to do this week is make labels on all the plants. I do label each plant individually with their name and depending on if there's multiples, it will be like Monstera Albo number one, Monstera Albo number two, because obviously the plants are different. So I like to label them because it makes it easier for me. And then I have to take multiple photos of each plant so that I can make individual listings on my shop website. And I'm hoping that I can get this done today and get everything uploaded on the shop literally today it is actually saturday normally i restock my shop on thursdays but i purposely wasn't restocking the shop because i wanted to bring all these plants to the market event but obviously that's not happening so i'm gonna do my best today to really push through and get all these listings up by tonight and then i can get everything packed and shipped by monday and tuesday so let's just jump right into what i have to do so a lot of the plants in here are mixed up between plants that are already on my shop and plants that are new that haven't been put on there. So the first thing I need to do actually is determine what's on the shop and what's not. So I'm just going to go through all the bins and try to condense the plants that aren't on the shop into their own bins. So it makes it easier for me to label them and then I can start taking pictures of them. So I'm just going to start with this bin here because it's the most empty. This one just has some little seedlings in it. I'm going to probably reorganize them again. And also the bins are super messy. They have like soil mix in them because yet again, three more plants fell from the top shelf and fell all in the bins and made a complete mess yet again. So what I'm just doing is trying to pull in all the plants that are not on the shop right now. I pretty much know what's on the shop and what's not. So this is pretty uh, easy for me. And I also have a lot of plants that are just cuttings like this one, for instance, that I potted up in moss. So I don't always put plant cuttings on the shop. I prefer them to be like established. This time around, I'm gonna just do it. So anybody that just wants a cutting, they can buy them. Cuttings are always cheaper on my site. Each plant cutting in the listing, it notes that it is a cutting. And I recommend that you put it in water for the next few weeks before you pot it up, just so that the plant doesn't decline or anything like that. So I always make sure to put instructions um, on what to do with like your plant cutting when you get it. So yeah, I'm just trying to see what we already have and what's new. So I know for sure these plants in here, they are already on the shop. So I'm just gonna try to move some of the plants around. And while I'm doing this, I might as well take some updated pictures because this uh, Adonsonii aria has grown so much compared to the picture. I think the picture only has this leaf and this leaf, but look at all these beautiful leaves now. So. Uh, I definitely need updated pictures on these. So I'm just going to put them in the front so that I know to get updated pictures of the Adansonii. And another thing I'm going to do today after I'm done taking pictures is water the plants because they are so thirsty. We have this bin here. I'm going to put this on the floor. And then this bin has some plants that are not for sale yet. So I'm going to put them here. We have this anthurium here. Um, what else? So another thing that kind of sucks is that the ties are still too big to be shipped. I was really looking forward to selling them at the event in person because obviously it's way easier to sell big plant in person than it is online. So I'm going back and forth if I actually want to list the ties or not. I'm probably not to be honest just because like the shipping is just it's such a hassle and I don't know, it gets so expensive. It's like, it's not even like worth it. It's not worth it sometimes shipping a really big plant. I don't wanna get your hopes up that they're gonna be on there because they're probably not. I have this tie. This one is actually not that big. So I'm probably gonna do this one 
but the other two they're just way too big to like put in a box it's just too much and luckily all the hoyas are actually already on the shop so that's like one less thing to worry about because we have a bunch of hoyas so i don't have to worry about adding those so that's good i just have to do all these monstera elbows and i have these esqueletos here they are super thirsty which sucks because I'm trying to take pictures of them. They need pictures and labels. Then I have all of the Monstera albos. They are not on the shop, so they have to be added as well. We have this one here. All the cuttings were put into a moss and perlite mix so that I could physically bring them to the pop-up event without having to worry about like putting them in a cup of water or anything. So when they get shipped, they are going to be shipped in the moss perlite as well. I actually think this guy is already on the shop, so we don't have to worry about that. Now I'm just going to label all the plants with their right name so that I don't get them confused. So when I do my labels, I have these like pre-made labels here. It has like my shop name printed on there and everything. And then I would just hand write the plant. I recently bought a Bluetooth label maker that like connects to your phone and it like prints on the spot. So you would like type in how you want your label and then press print and it would literally print from the device right from like your phone like that. And it's delivered, but my apartment, we have like Amazon on lockers and the lockers are like down so nobody can go there and get their packages they're just stuck in there so i'm really like irritated about that because like that would be way easier than just handwriting them i feel like and i think it also would look nicer if it was like printed out um, the reason I don't print them on these is because the way I print these is through my computer. The thermal printer isn't Bluetooth to your phone. If it was through my phone, it would be easier, but I never thought to get the Bluetooth one because I thought, oh, I'm never going to use that feature. But now I do this so often that I would really appreciate the convenience of being able to use my phone. Hopefully to get the lockers fixed so that I can go ahead and have it for the next update. But yeah. Uh, I'm just going to handwrite all the labels today and then I will see you guys when I start taking pictures of all the plants. So normally as I'm taking pictures, I bring them back in here one by one and then I start sorting them as I'm taking the pictures. So I already went ahead and organized all the plants. So now I just want to water them. So let's just do that.
So last night I worked really hard and I updated the shop with all the plants in here. It took me a few hours but it's done and you guys have already been shopping so thank you guys so much. I think I finally finished everything around 9 o'clock at night so I think that's when I sent the email out. Like I said I normally send out the email on Thursday but I had other plans this week. I'm just really happy that I was able to update the shop and you guys were able to get some of these beautiful plants and you didn't have to wait any longer. I have a few more plants here I have four of them these ones I still have to get pictures of and put them on the shop today because yesterday they were super thirsty and they just didn't look good for pictures these plants were so thirsty that they literally looked like they were dying but they weren't so I didn't want to take pictures of them until they looked better the annoying thing about the escaletto sometimes is because it fenestrates so much that it will sometimes rip like this and it makes it look like it's like damaged but it's pretty common in them, so I'm just going to sell it as is. This one here is a more juvenile leaf, but as they mature, they really do put out some serious fenestrated leaves. So they do get like this um, over time. This is a Freestyle Verde, which I had completely forgot about. I have a mother Precio Verde that lives in my living room now and it's really, really tall. And at some point it was getting really leggy and I'm pretty sure that this is the bottom cut. So this was the whole stem and then it was like a long stick and then I just took the top cut and it finally put out this beautiful leaf. For a long time it was just growing in here as a stick and I had no idea what this plant was. This week it put out this leaf and it has a new one coming in, so I'm just going to list it on the shop. And then I have another Amy Durium here. This is Amy Durium Medium Blue. This one, like I said, was super thirsty, so it didn't look good, but it's looking way better today, so I'm going to get some pictures of it. And then I also have this little Amy Durium Medium Blue as well that needs a new picture and has to go up on the shop. I'm just going to keep them in the corner back here so that I know that they need to go on the shop. So then I have another bin over here in this corner. This bin is always in this corner. I always keep it for plants that are rehabs or plants that still need more time growing wanted to implement something new to the shop where i have a category of plants that are called cosmetic damage plants slash rehab plants or something like that the reason why i want to do that is because a lot of plants just look ugly but they're overall very healthy like they have great roots and everything like that but like maybe they have some discoloration maybe they have some rips in their leaves and maybe they just need some tlc so i was thinking about doing a little section like that and if anybody wants to have a little rehab project they can this is currently what's in the little rehab bin and like i said there's nothing wrong with these plants it might just be like coloration um light burn stuff like that there's no pests there's no root rot there's like nothing wrong with them but this one is way lighter than the typical bromarx variegated and i think it's because i gave it too much light in one of my cabinets this one is like completely healthy it's fully rooted and everything like that but the color is like kind of off and each plant that i put up there in the description I'm going to list what is possibly wrong with it and give you an idea before you purchase it you know letting you know like this is a rehab or cosmetic damage plant it's not perfect probably going to implement that probably the next coming update but we have this one here and then also have this Burl Marks variegated here which is like kind of the same thing and also it's just overall like ugly so it's kind of like an imperfect plant and I know a lot of people do sell like imperfect plant like boxes, like mystery boxes and stuff like that. This plant was way bigger, but all the leaves just got super burned in the light. So I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Maybe I will um, post them up next week. So I have those two brow marks. This is a baby pink princess here. It's just a one leaf cutting. It has a new leaf coming in. It's very small. I don't really know what I'm going to do with this. This is not actually rehab or anything. It's just um, growing. I think I'm going to wait until it puts out a second leaf and then I'll list it for the shop. And then this one here is another Amy Durian medium blue. So this one is confusing me because this one is perfectly healthy. It's completely fully rooted. It has fuzzy roots. It looks great. It's just weird to me that the stem has yellow in it, but it's not rotting. And it even has like yellow in here. But like I said, I pulled it out and it's like completely white roots. It's not rotting. It's not squishy or anything like that. It's like growing. So I don't really understand what's going on with this plant. So I might just put it to the side. This was propped from the mother plant. It was a pup that was just growing on the side. So I just pulled it out. But it was yellow the whole time like that and it was just living in there. So I don't really fully understand why. But like I said, I'll just let it grow out and see what happens. This little stick here is actually a Milano Chrysum. You can see it does have a little growth point there. I've been growing this one for a little while, but I definitely do forget to water it. So that's probably why it's taking so long. Probably once this puts out a little leaf, that's when I'll list it as like a um, rehab plant or whatever like that. 
but I just wanted to share that little update with you guys. So just let me know what you guys think about that whole little category. And I will try to add some plants that need some TLC to that category. And then you guys can shop plants at a discounted price. One of my last plant chores this week that I need to do is change all the water in all these propagations. I keep all my propagations in their own individual cup, glass, vessel, whatever you want to call it. And I strictly do water propagation only. Water propagation is the easiest and fastest thing for me because I always have a ton of propagations for the shop going. I need something that's very easy and simple to do that doesn't require me like fiddling around with like moss and perlite, detangling roots and stuff like that. I just need it to be really easy to do. And I've talked about this before but this is a task that my boyfriend James can do he will come in here and he will change out the water for me like weekly um, and he has already done that but earlier this week one of the plants fell from the top and all the substrate fell like into these vessels so they are all like dirty and stuff so I am going to just do that now and then when I come back I will show you guys all the props that we have I just take all the plants to my kitchen sink and I just uh, rinse the plants down under the faucets and then just give them fresh water I just use plain tap water I don't add anything in there I don't add any fertilizer I don't use distilled water like I just use regular tap water so right now propping we have this other Thai constellation here. This one is a two leafer. I will say I am getting very frustrated with the bigger ties like this. I have a few that were also rooting in water that were ready to be moved into potting mix and ready to be moved into like a perlite moss mix. These plants are just so finicky, you guys, that they will just take a turn for the worse. And I'm getting really tired of it. This plant in particular had a bunch of roots uh, last month. I moved it to moss perlite so that I could ship it because a customer did want this plant. I moved it to moss and perlite so that I could ship it. And within a few hours of it being in the moss, it completely rotted and left me with no roots so i had to let the customer know like hey like i can't ship this plant like it doesn't look good every single time i'm ready to sell these ties uh, something happens and i'm getting like super frustrated with them so here's what the roots are looking like now it has two roots it has like a small secondary on it so i know it's doing better but like this was like a fully like water rooted tie at some point and it was getting prepped for shipping and it just didn't make it i don't know but that's why i'm like kind of over the ties and like selling the big ones. Um, I think once I'm finally done with this batch of ties, I don't think I'm ever gonna get these big ones again. It's just way too much to deal with. I think that the wholesaler has different sizes between like two inches to four inches. So I'll probably start just going with those. But I don't think that I'm going to be buying the six inch pot ones anymore just because they are just way too finicky. And at the end of the day, these ties are a huge waste of time for me. And they're also a huge loss. So I just can't really see myself getting these big ones in the future. But the ones that I have, I'm still growing them out. I'm still trying to sell them. I'm really particular about how I sell the plants. I want to wait until they are like really, really rooted before I try to like send them off to anybody because I just don't want anybody to open their box and their plant is like completely dead, you know what I mean? So yeah, that was my little Thai constellation rant. But moving on, I have a ton of these Amy Durian medium blues. These are all top and mid cuts. I am going to keep one of the top cuts once they finally root because this is actually my mother plant. The reason I chopped it up was just because I just only want a small piece of it. I grew it out quite big and I'm ready to just start over and get some more cuttings for you guys because I know a lot of you guys like this plant and you don't really see it that often it was one of my big wish list plants that I got last year for my birthday this is a little pink princess here it's a little wonky one not that variegated but still cute I have these little baby Milano Chrysums here these are just some Epipremnum Albo cuttings I have a Philodendron Florida Beauty a little baby starter right here and then also in here, I have a Philodendron Brawl Marks Variegated, this little guy here. These are all top cuts and mid cuts of my Philodendron 69686. I am selling the bottom cut at the moment. The next one is this Philodendron Gloriosum Verde or Philodendron Gloriosum Green. This is a new prop that I took off of my Gloriosum that sits on the top. The Gloriosum Silver and the Green look very similar, but obviously have different characteristics. But overall, I think I like the green more. In this one, we have a few more Jose Buenos, and this is what they are looking like. The Jose is one of my favorite plants. I think it's absolutely beautiful. So that is pretty much it for the plant chores for this week. The last thing I have to do this week is 
Christmas pack orders. Like I said, I restocked the shop last night. We did get a bunch of orders overnight. Um, normally I do pack on Sunday, like afternoon, like around this time. And then I ship them out on Monday, but because I restocked so late, I don't want to start packing yet. Um, just because I feel like we're going to get a few more sales and I don't want to have to pack all of these and then bring out all the packing equipment again and stuff like that. I'm gonna use this as a lazy Sunday. I have my comfy clothes on and I'm probably just going to chill out with James and yeah, that's really it. So yeah, I will see you guys when I start packing orders.